So, it's uh, 10 a.m. here in France. Uh, we will be starting this webinar. First of all, we want to welcome you to this uh, webinar from SciLab and uh, from my colleague and I, Paul Vignier uh, and Yann Debray. We are here in Versailles, in France, and um, we are here to talk about uh, test and measurement, especially with a few demo on the SciLab LabView Gateway. Here is a, a short agenda for today, for this morning, for the hour we'll be spending together. Uh, please ask questions during the webinar, but uh, um, if it's also something that you can keep and write down for, for afterwards, we will be uh, saving some time in the end to answer your questions. We will first, first start off with an introduction of SciLab, the demo on the SciLab LabVIEW gateway, and a few use cases in industrial fields on how SciLab is being used for test and measurement. Let me start with the history of SciLab, because we've got quite a bit of history. Um, it all started up uh, in, in uh, the early 80s, and uh, with a first version of MATLAB, a free version of MATLAB, it was the first kernel of SciLab. It's been developed in America, uh, in the US, uh, under the public domain, and from this, uh, this first kernel, there were a few directions, one that you might know under the name of, of MATLAB and the company who's developing it further, MathWork. In France, um, there's a research institute called INRIA. It's uh, standing for um, Informatics and Automation, and the researchers they were quite interested in this uh, computer-aided uh, design uh, software for automation, and they decided to well develop it further within the research institute for its own purposes. So it's been going on for about 10 years, and in the early 90s, they figured out that there might be some interest outside of the research for this software SciLab. So in 1994, well, INRIA released the first version of SciLab under an open source license. It's been developed further within INRIA as a, the project SciLab, and in um, 2003, well, um, they gained quite a lot of interest within the industry, especially in France. So they decided to create a consortium with a few um, industrial companies in France in order to uh, confront the software to industrial needs. Uh, the companies were big um, companies such as Airbus, the French uh, national um, space agency, CNES, a few automotive um, companies such as Renault and PSA, Peugeot, and also ArcelorMittal, some other companies in other fields. Fabrice, is Fabrice uh, the only one uh, having uh, sound trouble? Or uh, is the rest of you guys fine? Can you still hear us? Oh, so Iggy's all right. Hater also, and Marco. Okay, Fabrice, right. uh, you might wanna maybe turn up your volume. We will go on uh, if it's all right for you, uh, in order to stick with the time and well, you can catch up and you've got the presentation. Um, so, as I was saying during this consortium, uh, together between research and industry. Um, well, they figured out, uh, the um, industrial companies, that uh, they needed some additional services in order to implement SciLab in their environment. So it was the purpose of uh, the creation of SciLab Enterprise at the time in the frame of the research 
uh, it was uh, not a frame allowing to uh, provide services, professional services. So that was the reason of the creation of Scilab Enterprise. Sorry, <laughs> along with the consortium. Um, and as the, the, the purpose of the consortium was fulfilled of making uh, Scilab of a good quality for industrial use, well, the whole t development team of Scilab uh, when came to, to Scilab Enterprise. So today, um, here at Scilab Enterprise, we are the um, official developers, publishers of, of Scilab. We're a small team of uh, software developers and uh, applied mathematicians. And kind of a startup, well, as you can see, uh, only three or four years old. So, about the state of Scilab today, the software, um, it can be downloaded on uh, scilab.org. Um, today we register around 100,000 uh, downloads per month uh, in uh, about uh, 150 countries. Um, France is one of the uh, first um, source of downloads, but there's also quite a lot of traction in uh, America, in uh, South America, in countries such as Brazil, uh, also in the US, uh, in India, we've got, uh, we've got uh, um, a good partnership with uh, uh, IIT Bombay, uh, Mumbai, which is uh, um, kind of a, an equivalent to the MIT, but uh, in India, so they are, um, they are teaching Scilab to around, uh, I think, also several thousand uh, engineers per year. And as of today, the distribution when you download Scilab is composed of three parts. So the first part is the workstation software Scilab, the computing engine. The second part would be an equivalent to Simulink, which we call the uh, uh, Xcos. It's um, well, it's meant as a graphical interface for modeling of systems and simulation of uh, uh, dynamic system on continuous and discrete time uh, scales. So we we can discuss a bit further about that. It's not the main focus uh, of today, but just so that you know. It's also a, a good interface to design a uh, control system. And the third part is a server software, Atoms. Um, there's a public repository, atoms.scilab.org, which enables um, the download of additional toolboxes developed by us or by the community. At the moment, there's around 200 uh, uh, toolboxes available on, uh, on atoms.scilab.org. And this mechanism of Atoms is also enabling the download of these toolboxes directly from your Scilab environment. So you get a, a small uh, box within uh, the Scilab environment in the, in the menu. And so you can go click on it and download uh, some of these packages. So this is it for our for first uh, overview of, uh, of the product. And today, um, well, the subject that we are especially interested about is, is, is uh, signal acquisition and instrument control. Um, here, we've uh, been developing a, a few modules, additional modules, uh, especially with the help of national instruments. Um, one of them here is, uh, we, that we will be presenting is the Scilab uh, uh, LabVIEW gateway. So it's uh, basically an interface within uh, LabVIEW to call Scilab, uh, but um, we can also discuss it in the end of, of the, the webinar. There's also uh, another additional toolbox uh, available called the Visa Toolbox for Virtual Instrument Software Architecture. And Visa is, a, is a basically a, a standard um, developed established by National Instrument and, and several other manufacturers of uh, uh, measurement devices. And it's enabling uh, directly from Scilab to acquire your signal and control instrument uh, from a, a broad range of instrument uh, devices, such as uh, oscilloscopes, uh, signal generators, uh, and so on. So 
This is here uh, on your screen an example of, of a graphical user interface that you could be uh, developing, developing directly within Scilab uh, here to acquire temperature directly um, from your Scilab environment, for example, with this Visa toolbox. Uh, also, what we released uh, yesterday is a small news on the use of Arduino as a low cost, as an entry level uh, data acquisition board. Um, so it's also an alternative, mainly for for uh, educational purposes, I would say, at the moment, because uh, what it does is is basically just acquiring the signal and and, and well pushing it to Scilab. So uh, the real time constraints are not so strong uh, here. But um, well, enough about um, this, so just a, a few words about what we do also because it could be a kind of a surprise that the company is developing a, an open source software further. Here's an explanation. Uh, what we do is basically services, as I, as I stated in, in the history in the introduction, we do services around uh, Scilab such as trainings, uh, support and uh, um, specific developments. Um, we are going to release um, soon a uh, cloud offering. And the first step of that would be for you to be able to, to deploy your scientific web application directly on our services, on our uh, server, in order to, to push it to your, to your user worldwide through a, a simple uh, browser. So this is it for, for, for the small words on what we do on, on a commercial level. Um, a, a few references just so that you can see in which domain Asylum is being used. As I mentioned during the consortium there were uh, a few um, aerospace, automotive and process industries um, joining to help develop the, the software Scilab uh, further. And here you have a, a well non-existent list of several fields where Scilab is being used. You can see in the end also uh, some people in electronics and, and, and uh, test and measurement. In France, for example, ST Microelectronics is, is developing uh, at the moment uh, uh, code generation from Xcos, uh, especially for STM32 STM uh, um, family. But um, we've got also some contacts at the moment with Microchip and Xilinx who are also interested in linking Scilab with their, um, with their hardware. And uh, as, as you will see afterwards in, in the third part, in the use cases, there are, well, some examples of how it's uh, being done. So enough about me talking, and now I will let uh, my colleague uh, Paul present. So you can share your screen, Paul, and um, we will uh, now see directly live what uh, what uh, Scilab and Lab you can do together. Maybe as an introduction, also the the four different demos that, as you could uh, see in in the in the program. Initially, uh, there are four demos, and uh, well, I yeah, exactly. When you when you uh, download the and install the gateway, uh, you will have. Okay, you should have my screen now. So it uh, yeah, just the same. You can go down uh, right and push the button to switch between uh, fit to screen and the original size mode. So, here, for example, yeah. Okay. Here you go. Okay, so when you install the gateway, which I uh, provided the link for in the in the chat, uh, you will have uh, available a few available demonstrations that you can run. I, I have tweaked uh, those a bit for this webinar, and uh, anyway, the gateway. Uh, <coughs> was published uh, four years ago, so it hasn't moved since then. Uh, but it's basically uh, the, the, the same demonstration, so I'll go on with it. So when you install the gateway and you run LabVIEW, a new uh, diagram, uh, this is what you get. You get a new 
um, integrated button inside LabVIEW, which lets you uh, write side up script. So MATLAB is uh, built in, uh, the, the, the scripting for MATLAB is built in in LabVIEW, so it's already present at the beginning, but what the gateway did when you installed it, it added the, the side up script. So you can select the script and insert it inside your, your, your diagram. I'm not, this is exactly what I did here, uh, writing the demo. Uh, so how does it work? So uh, in this LabVIEW demonstration, um, there is no there is no loop. It's it's only a it's a, a one shot demonstration. So I'll just play it once and it will stop running. Uh, so there is no input. There is only a script running that will start the Scilab engine uh, as a process on your machine and get uh, a few outputs from it. So this is the three outputs from the the demo, which are string values uh, indicated by the the, the color. Uh, as a script, so you can input, uh, you can add inputs to your script and out outputs. How do you do that? Just right click on it and add, this is in French, I'm sorry. This is uh, adding uh, an input and this is adding an output. This, so here you can see there are three outputs and then I'm linking those to the, the LabVIEW indicators which show on the, on the front device. So when I run my demonstration, you got it? Okay. Should be running. It's the first time it's launching side up, so it's uh okay. So we got it. Okay, so what happened here? So lab you run my Scilab uh, script, uh, asking for the get version function, which is a Scilab built-in macro. It asked for some debug info, again a Scilab function, <laughs> and it asked for a, a plot 3D. That's why it took so long, it's because it's launched the, 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 some graphics in Scilab. And uh, so this is why I got this plot, it's because it's the, the demo for when you run plot 3D in, in Scilab. And uh, in the in the in the string value, so it it output uh, it output um, a, a, make, a vector of strings. So here, ver v e r was just one uh, scalar string, which was my version of Scilab. So the the um, the gateway uh, links to the latest installed Scilab. Uh, on your system, so the, the 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 version that you installed last. This is why uh, it's linked to my 552 here, which is the 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 latest uh, long-term support version of Scilab. Um, okay, and in the um, debug info one, which is here, there is a uh, info about uh, your system. The uh, number of processors, etc. Some information that we could need if there was a crash in your Scilab. Uh, and as well here, so it's those are the two outputs of get debug info inside Scilab, helping us know uh, a bit more about letting us know a bit more about your system. So you can try these demos, and that's uh, just the first easy demonstration, just to to prove that. The, um, the 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 gateway works on your system, and again that you can uh, benefit from the the graphic functions of Scilab inside LabVIEW. I'm going to switch to the second demonstration now. So this one you you've got already running before. I'm sorry. You got it running before. You didn't play, push play. It was already running. Which one? This one? This one, yeah. I don't know. This one, is, I just loaded this one. Okay. It's uh, directly um, loading like yeah, this. Okay. Yeah, it's loading like this. Okay, so this one I think I uh, tweaked a little more. 
so you might not recognize exactly the, 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 the script because here there are two versions, the vectorizing the second trauma. And I think in the, in the demos originally, um, this is not present. But this goes to show that uh, you benefit from the vectorizing uh, cap capabilities of Scilab in Scilab view. So what happens here? Um, so m uh, as inputs, to my uh, so there is a, a big loop here so it's gonna run for uh, for every uh, every uh, 100 um, uh, milliseconds so my inputs are the indicators here uh, in LabVIEW which come in here and there and another here and there and uh, a few constants and they're all um, going to, to, to my side of script, which uh, outputs the, the coordinates of my, um, the, 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 the dots in the, um, in the 3D surface plot. Just checking, okay, good. Alright, so um, what I'm doing here, um, I can explain a bit before I launch the demo. Uh, in Scilab, I'm going to create two vectors, which are going to be x and y, uh, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it uh, in two ways, um, calculating the coordinates of the points. One way is going to be vectorized, and this, another one is going to be uh, sequen sequential. Um, so in the first case, I use my vectors, and I generate vectors from my vectors. So that's why v1, v2 are still vectors. Uh, I'm even generating, uh, after uh, I got my two vectors, the matrix, two matrices, a map one and map two, and which will give me, um, by adding uh, them both, uh, my ending uh, Z, which are going to be the altitudes, and so it. Th this just takes four lines. It's uh, very easy to do. I could have even um, do it. Uh, Z equals rep mat one plus rep mat two, but this is the, an easy and readable way to do it. And in a sequential way, uh, this is. Uh, a very bad practice in Scilab, Marco. You, you, if you're an experienced user. You may know that in Scilab you should not use, you should not be using uh, sequential uh, loops such as for and while loops, because it's um, as Scilab is a an interpreted language, it's just um, a gateway to um, to compile code such as C, C++. So when you do a for or while loop, you just uh, loop from the Scilab gateway layer to the compile code layer. So you do that as many times as you have it, uh, iterations. So uh, it's better to use vectorized code because there is only one uh, going back from the, the Scilab layer to the compile code layer. And just for, for, for those who don't know uh, much about the uh, grammar of Scilab here, if you have double uh, slashes, it means that it's been commented, so it's not going to run. So you're just going to run the vectorized. Version. Yeah, it's been commented out, so vectorized and sequential um, uh, are not going to be a... These are commenters, so yeah. it's just going to run the vectorized version. Right. So, uh, and so in Scilab, as you can see, those are my inputs and those are my outputs. I hope there is not too much lag, so when I show you something on the screen, uh, I hope you can see it uh, at, the, at the same time. Um, Otherwise, we'll be uh, maybe tweaking the, the sampling. Yeah, I yeah, well, might. Uh, because it's it the internet, so you might not see it at, at the same uh, rate set as we see it <laughs> on our screen. Just tell us if it's troublesome, otherwise, uh, <coughs> we'll keep on going. So, when I launch the demo, this is what I get. So, uh, on your screen, yeah, yeah it's. Uh, it's uh, like the sampling seems to be uh, 0 0.5 seconds or something like that. On my screen, I promise you, it's perfectly fluid. It's uh, like uh, point, po uh, 0 0.01 seconds. Uh, uh, there, there's like no refresh. It's very fluid, very smooth. 
so I can tweak it. Uh, the, the I can tweak the speed, so this might. Um, yeah, this might not display so well on your screen because there's yeah. still this display, this sampling from the internet from the connection. So you can try a demo on your computer. It's uh, on my computer when I uh, maximize the speeds, uh, it still runs very very fast. Or maybe you want to slow it down so that we can see it actually slowing it down on the screen of the. No, no, minus is zero. Yeah. yeah, sorry. So if you go to zero, it's it's going really slow, and now it should be. It's very smooth on my computer. Anyway, so I can tweak the magnitudes as well. So you can have a let's say a zero in oh, beautiful waves. So this is the, the 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 kind of thing that you can do. So here you're not benefiting from the graphical capabilities of Sia because it's all um, it's all done in in LabVIEW. Uh, not not uh, personally a big fan of the LabVIEW uh, graphics, but that's uh, that's uh, another point. Um, okay, so th this was a demonstration showing that uh, in in uh, in Scilab you can benefit from the the vectorizing uh, abilities of Scilab, which is uh, when if you're an experienced Scilab user, uh, th this is very fast. It goes, it runs very fast. It's very Readable. That's also a, a good point for it, uh, being readable. And just also, um, besides the fact that you can use these vectorizing capabilities, you can also basically just use this scripting capabilities of, of Scilab, which is uh, uh, good to um, well design, for example, filters. Uh, if you want to design your own filter, then you can script it within this script, and then basically it gives you more Flexibilities and just uh, uh, view blocks, mm. and you can you reuse the 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 parts the, the the codes that you already wrote, of course. So you don't have to yeah. So you get translate it. into 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 LabVIEW. You, you can just paste it there. Okay, so let's go on to the move on to the next uh, next demonstration, which is a bit more interesting because it's not just a, just to show the basics. Okay, this is very, uh, very, very common. I don't mean it's good. All right. Um, okay, so this is a very uh, common amplitude modulation example. So you get, you have a, a carrier signal. You start with a, a carrier signal. You have a message that you want to modulate. And uh, so those are going to be the the two first inputs, and this is going to be the the output, the AM signal. It's going to be the output. This is. It's alright. I'm right, just going okay. on. Just. Okay, so um, here in LabVIEW, I have added a, a, a bit of comments, so you can uh, um, see uh, how it how it um, how the flow flow goes. So. On the top, you have the carrier, and the bottom, the, the message. And inside that, this is done in just a couple of lines. So you have um, you build you build your uh, your vector, um, your uh, x axis vector. So here, t is a is a vector. See, this is the way inside that to to create series. Um, you you build your your carrier. Um, based on the, the, um, the indicators from LabVIEW. So with uh, cos uh, f uh, times t, this is, this is my vector, and this, uh, this is a constant, right? So it, this is all going to be a vector just because t is a vector. So this is going to be a vectorized operation, scalar times vector, it's going to be vector, plus scalar, which is going to do vector. So carrier is still going to be a vector and message as well. It's pretty much the same. And my um, uh, modulated signal, which is going to be... So we said that this and this were vectors. So this uh, U, where is U? Well, there, there is. Oh, it's just a, a scholar. So this is a scholar. Scholar times vector is going to do vector. So here we have one vector times another vector. This is why we use... It's a bit slower because it doesn't display as fast as you speak with your mouse. All right, okay. 
so this is a vector and carrier is a vector as well which is why we use that operator in scilab dot uh, times which is uh, dot star dot times whatever uh, which is going to do element wise uh, multiplication of vectors so am is going to be um, a vector as well which is uh, the first vector times the second vector element wise alright so this is uh, very common as well and when I run it nothing's going to change with my, on my screen because this is running so now when I tweak my inputs if I uh, modify the frequency of my carrier signal but it's not exactly what I want to do, this is more like it I can uh, uh, modify the phase, I can modify the, the amplitude and it's going to show on my AM signal uh, at the bottom uh, the modif... it's really... it's not no, it's actually... Into screen. here it's actually, it might be better for you to not fit to the screen of the whole computer if you want to see uh, the things that we are displaying it's as you wish, as you as wish. wish. So you, you can might. switch between the two yeah. uh, features of, of WebEQO to fit the screen or, or just display mm. the current uh, area. Right, and my uh, my message when it's, when uh, <coughs> I wanted to really show to stick out, uh, I can uh, lower the frequency. So this all shows in my M signal. So. What, it's, what happens here, uh, so we start from the, the, the inputs, uh, the indicators of LabVIEW. Um, there is also the, the, the order which is there, um, modulation order. This is U. Uh, and I'm retrieving in, uh, from SIDA my carrier signal, my message, and my uh, modulated signal. And this all goes uh, uh, into a loop. Uh, so the, the basically the main output of my um, uh, computation is the modulated signal. Fine, fine for this. Uh, move on to the to the next one. If uh, if it's clear for you guys, uh, this should be very uh, basic. Uh, but this is getting really on the the signal uh, more into the signal processing uh, operations. So the um, so this is something yeah you, you could want to uh, do in in real time let's say during your uh, measurements also in Scilab you've got some capabilities well uh, as uh, you've shown the modeling uh, the modulation of amplitude you can also do it in simulation directly in Scilab but here it's it's more meant for uh, real time measurement uh, there was a question from Fabrice uh, we can answer your questions here it's, it's more global on, on the function of the capabilities of the gateway but we would answer to that later but I think on this one yeah we can go further to the last uh, yeah I had uh, four uh, demonstrations to show you so we're gonna move on to the, to the last one so this one is linking it with uh, hardware basically so it gets interesting there it gets real this is where it gets real. So it's so it's uh, it's bigger because it's more real. So here also, as you can see on our camera, we've got um, this NIDAC. So this acquisition device. Uh, it's really simple. It is just um, here for, let's say, educational purposes. It's We've got a microphone, but also all sets of uh, analog and, and uh, digital input and output, and with, uh, well, also here, some special uh, uh, volt inputs. But here, what we'll be only using is this microphone. Right. Uh, so, on the... Okay. Um, all right. Just going to take it from a wide angle. So, in this demonstration, we're going to do uh, from an input signal, uh, computations inside uh, LabVIEW and uh, inside Scilab. Uh, so on the diagram, uh, this is the input, uh, um, the DAC uh, assistance, which, which is going to capture the signal and route it to uh, either LabVIEW or Scilab. So 
the signal is gonna um, be output by uh, this link. There we are gonna um, put a gain on it and send it to uh, first the least interesting one. It's gonna just be output to the to the to the deck without any modification. So this is this is a bit dumb, but um, if we input the signal, we can output it uh, also from the same uh, device. This has no interest. Um, the second one um, after the gate is going to be uh, uh, we are going to use uh, tone extraction from LabVIEW. So there is a, a simple um, um, uh, tool to do it in in, uh, in LabVIEW, and we're going to output it on the waveform graph. This so this is going to show the signal that's going to be uh, that's uh, being captured by the the uh, device, and uh, finally, with uh, after the game, the signal, we're going to send it to Scilab, which is going to do computations on it and output the, the, um, the tone that's been extracted. So here we're going to see a few uh, um, features of Scilab um, um, step by step. So uh, we are also going to do a benchmark. Um, not exactly a benchmark, but we're going to time the, uh, uh, the Scilab so we know how long uh, they take it uh, to do its computations. This is why take is present, take it starts a timer and talk at the, at the end stops the timer. Um, Alright, so starting from the, um, the, the, the sampling rate, we're going to build a vector, so this is going to be my um, my x uh, vector. Uh, I'm gonna do an uh, FFT on it, uh, which is done easily in Scilab. So just with the the, um, the FFT function, if you're a, a experienced Scilab user uh, in uh, in signal processing, you must be very familiar with it. So you know that you can uh, tweak it uh, your ways to do it. Uh, Exactly, just just the way you want it. So, uh, but basically, what it does is it's giving um, a complex number out. So that's why you're taking just the abscess of it, right? Uh, it's it's giving the um, it's uh, going from um, temporal to um, frequential sig uh, from uh, a signal is it's, it's being translated into a frequential uh, uh, domain. So from this uh, modular FFT signal, which is represents my um, my uh, uh, frequencies, uh, extracted frequencies. Uh, I'm gonna uh, take the, the the peak of it, the the maximum of it, and uh, to um, verify that it's um, to check uh, extract the, the the maximum frequency. So uh, in order to translate that into uh, a note, a real note in um, in in the music world, um, I have a chart. Which I'm gonna read with CSV read, so uh, it's it's a it's a CSV file that's present uh, when you download the, the 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 gateway. So here in Scilab, you can you can since you can use all the features of Scilab, you can uh, uh, read a CSV file, and um, in this CSV file we have mapped all the notes to not all the notes but a lot of notes to the um, to the to to uh, to a frequency, so every note uh, is related to a signal, and from the um, this this is the peak of my um, of my uh, extracted uh, uh, frequency, and I'm gonna compare it to the to its closest uh, note present in the chart. So this is uh, the the minimum there. <coughs> so it's done by the minimum, and I'm Did gonna you just. Uh, here, uh, making the, the difference between the tone chart and, and the uh, peak that you just uh, yeah. measured, and you know, you see what what is the minimum of these distances. Of this is why also this is why it's gonna give uh, yield it's gonna yield um, um, an integer value. It's because uh, it outputs the um, the frequency that's been related closest to. So um, uh, and at the end, so I'm gonna output uh, those five uh, elements. So you see that. Uh, the orange ones are uh, double values, the real values, and uh, the um, the purple one is the um, pink purple. It's yeah. <laughs> the purple one is the the, the uh, name of the tone, 
So one of those here. So let's run it. So here you're gonna generate a, a signal, a sound from your from your phone. Yeah, I have a I have a recorded uh, an A uh, four hundred and forty uh, hertz. So it's gonna uh, it's the, the tone that it makes uh, at least in France. I don't know in other countries the tone that, uh, of your phone. So maybe here you can hear it. And this is going to my um, to to the. the Right to the microphone. Uh, it's not working yet. Uh, yeah, it's not working because I have to uh, change the gain. Let's see. Yeah, input to check the gain. Here you go. You get a single. So uh, the ni frequency is computed by by uh, the tone extraction here um, in um, in LabVIEW by LabVIEW. And uh, this is the output of Scilab. So we see that the this is the integer value uh, from the chart. The note that is being um, it's so you can see that it's an A4. Uh, we output the um, the the sampling rate just to show that it's it's the same. It's it's been saved from the from the input. There is no uh, no cheating here. And the bench just the timer. Uh, telling us that uh, the whole computation, the whole Scilab script, took about uh, 0 0.0, 22 seconds, something like that. I think you hear you're creating some perturbation with with your voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the that's frequency. why sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's changing. It's not uh, it's messing up, but it's still uh, extracting the um, the core uh, maximum uh, value. But that's why it's sometimes it's it's uh, it's jumping. So so perfect. So. I think we're done with, with the yeah, we're, demos. I'm, I'm done Do you have a few, few more words? Maybe here we had a, a question from Fabrice, and I think you can uh, answer it uh, on the range of capabilities uh, of this uh, gateway if all of the functions of Scilab are available um, on the view. So can, can, you, can, can you answer that maybe? Uh, there is no limitation. Th there is no uh, recorded. We don't know of any limitation yet. Uh, we haven't identified them, but there might be. There might be, especially on the um, graphical side. Uh, if you want to use uh, graphical uh, capabilities of Scilab, it has not been tested uh, thoroughly. So you might wanna you might wanna try it yourself and uh, give us yeah, the the, give us feedback. the the feedback. Um, I'm going to go through a few industrial use cases just quickly just so that you can realize also uh, beside these uh, elementary uh, demos, let's say, uh, how you can leverage within your industrial environment also the capabilities of, uh, uh, of Scilab for test and measurement. So here about the demos, yeah, we went through these uh, three, uh, four um, Elementary uses of, uh, of Scilab together with LabVIEW and about the use cases. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned, uh, Peugeot is using Scilab and uh, mostly here as an example in, in post processing of uh, aeroacoustic data um, acquisition. So they are doing uh, test uh, measurement on, on the uh, here, the rear um, mirror. mirror and as you can see, they are gathering all the data during the com test campaigns, displaying it in, in the um, frequency domain, and also plotting uh, for this rear mirror uh, the concentration of the, uh, of the values in, in dB. This was one example in automotive now, a bit uh, more advanced, but here in the, um, in the field of, of uh, Avinix, from uh, Dassault Aviation. What they do is uh, basically design of experiment. It's a bit more advanced, um, well, visualization and optimization of uh, the influence of the entry parameters on the output of their systems. So basically what they do, they have uh, a lot of data that they acquire from, um, well, here I can see that it's actually saying we're gonna end soon. 
just gonna go through the few examples a bit uh, faster. Yes, what I do is just gathering a few Excel uh, import from from simulation data and from uh, real test data, and they are displaying um, here. As you can see, it's a self-organizing map. It, it's uh, um, a, a beautiful chart uh, displaying the influence of the parameters. So what they do afterwards is uh, basically some statistical um, analysis with a Kriging module called DACE that you can download on Atoms. They also leverage the optimization capabilities of Scilab for multi-objective optimization uh, with one uh, of the top state-of-the-art uh, algorithm, uh, genetic algorithm called NSGA. So it's directly available within Sierra. Another example from INRIA, using it for uh, acquisition and uh, pre-processing and detection of uh, um, the rates of the art in the electrocardiogram. And here in the, uh, another field, uh, in the agriculture, they are directly leveraging these capabilities of uh, Sierra together with LabVIEW, with a gateway in order to, uh, well, to program uh, the cycle of this, uh, um, of this implement uh, mechanism. They are basically on the, in, the, in the field of Bavaria, they are uh, putting the uh, hope, the, um, uh, what, what we use to do beer, <laughs> they basically are using um, these big machines and just recording as a diagnostic tool all of the data with Scilab and view. And as I mentioned here, um, in the beginning, uh, one of the one of the companies that are doing test and measurement, uh, Dante Dynamics in, in Germany, they are gathering all of the data from their measurement instrument and then using Scilab for post-processing all, all, all of this data. Uh, it can be image here, but also frequencies directly taken from the sensors and uh, here dynamically plot um, the results. Now, uh, from the German Aerospace Center, DLR, they are doing a bit of real-time processing. Uh, in the air vehicle simulators that they have, what they simulate is that they have one helicopter and one um, Airbus, I think it's A320 um, airplane. Uh, ah, that's okay now. So ah, it's back. Good. It's back. Um, as I was mentioning, it goes a bit more in the direction of cogeneration and hardware in the loop. What they do is, uh, is basically they have a model of the behavior of the airplane or the helicopter, and well, they model it within uh, Hixcos here, as you can see, um, and pushing it uh, to their uh, hardware. Uh, in order to um, well directly train the pilots, so here it's been it's an ongoing work with uh, DLR within the European project we are um, well, that we are performing at the moment. And the last example from Xilinx here it's uh, well high performance uh, with a FPGA hardware in the loop control of uh, electrical drive. What they do is basically they want to uh, get uh, from their uh, asynchronous motor um, some signals on, on the tension, on the uh, current, intensity of the current from the motor. So they have sensors and they are displaying it directly within Scilab uh, through an Ethernet uh, 1 gigabyte uh, connection. So this is uh, also an interesting. Uh, well, example. That was it. Um, well, if you have some question, now we can uh, answer it. Um, thank you anyway for listening to us, and we we are at your disposal. So Christian was asking if you run a Scilab script a second time, is it possible that the variable keep its value from its first run? I seriously doubt it. it's going to be uh, two separ separate uh, processes on your machine uh, if you have two uh, side scripts. 
so uh, you you need to find a way to um, to 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 send it from the first. So y your question is: if you have two scripts, uh, two um, frames inside that view, you can send the, the output of one to the to the, to the second one. Uh, that's how I understood your question. Uh, that 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 would need to be done through um, some kind of file or some kind of um, uh, temporary. Uh, file in which you would write your value, but uh, I, I don't see a, a communication uh, between those two instances of Scylla. Um So I would say I would say no. I mean, there is a way, but not the the way that you are asking it. But this question is is within LabVIEW. Yes, it's only available for Windows at the moment. Uh, it was it was developed uh, as I said uh, four years ago, uh, so we are uh, doing also the, uh, these webinars to uh, to drum up interest uh, on the on the matter. And if you're interested in it, uh, the more feedback we get, the more interest from the community we get, uh, the more we are likely to um, to to uh, proceed on developments uh, for this um, uh, gateway. So it's I would say it's up to you. It's up to you if the community asks for it and is interested in uh, in uh, in the gateway. Uh, we may proceed on developments. Um, I will also uh, give the feedback to to our partners at uh, National Instrument in order to to show them that there are some interest from the community. That they, are, they, are, that they were really involved in the development, and they would be glad to know that uh, there are some interests uh, from this webinar to um, oh, so uh, I can you contact us so directly if you go to to uh, dot, uh, org or Scilab Enterprise there are some links on contact at thank you Fabrice uh, yeah C contact at uh, Scilab uh, and uh, no it's uh, Thierry sorry what, what is it um, contact scilabenterprise.com I'm gonna just write it down um, also my direct address if you want to uh, contact us for further questions I will also be um, sending you an email and uh, um, this way you would have our contacts for any further questions um, where was you? Uh, Marco can you please um are you are you saying uh, is it is your question uh, comparing the the two uh, uh, capabilities the the graphical uh, capabilities of, of LabVIEW compared to the ones uh, in LabVIEW is that your your question I mean I mean uh, is it useful uh, um, to use plotting uh, capabilities in LabVIEW um, the question only means something if you compare it to to the the side on. All right, okay sorry. Okay, um, it, uh, I would say it depends on what you do, but inside it, uh, we have uh, capability, we have features, graphical features that are not present in, uh, in LabVIEW, uh, surely, so uh, it depends on what you want to do, but uh, if you want to do uh, bold uh, plots or uh, Nyquist or e even s stuff like that, that um, uh, are related to signal processing functions. Uh, graphical signal processing functions, you, you may use them uh, for, uh, in your side of script. That, so th this is, um, of course, what I showed in that just the plot 3D makes no sense in itself, but um, we have plenty of uh, graph signal processing graphical functions. So those uh, make sense to use in mm -hmm. that, in that view in, uh, inside a script. Also, um, besides the uh, functional domains of the plots, uh, you get some some capabilities within Scilab to uh, play with your plot. You can export it. You can exactly. uh, change the scale. You can uh, add up uh, some titles. And uh, I think it's something that you cannot do so well on on on, uh, on LabVIEW. You get uh, an environment uh, within Scilab where you can get the graphic handle with axes and and change the colors and make some modification on on your 
on your plugs. What, so. what you might want to do for that is running an instance, instance of Scilab, just double clicking on your Scilab on your desktop and uh, going to the demonstrations, Scilab demonstrations, and uh, in the Scilabs, in the graphics sections, uh, you, you will find all the, um, the, the features, the graphical features of Scilab, uh, some related to signal processing. So that might give you a pointer on um, all the functions that you can use inside LabVIEW, which might uh, uh, do uh, wrap up what you want to do, or the kind of features if you want you know, tweak your existing um, graphical window. So in Scilab, when you have a graphical window already open, you can uh, get a hun handle on it and modify it uh, by script. Was it also an answer to your question of Yann? So, so Yann was also asking that you can pop up Scilab graphics from within a LabVIEW program. And I think it was basically the first demo that you did. That was the second. The yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, the, 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 the first the uh, demonstration. Uh, yes, so it's it's called a Scilab version. I think the, the, um, the VI, inside where, when you install the, um, the, the, the LabVIEW, the, the gateway, it's called a Scilab version, and uh, it, it gives you um, uh, information about your Scilab, um, the Scilab that installed on your system, and it also um, calls Plot 3D, which pops up uh, a 3D window. So yes, uh, you can it's use. It's pretty the, simple, and also if you just uh, uh, drag and drop a script. Uh, uh, a Scilab script within LabVIEW and just r uh, write down the plot uh, command, then you would also directly get a plot, not a plot 3D, yeah, but a plot which is what I did demo. In the demo. Uh, you did the plot 3D, you can also have the oh, yeah, 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 regular yeah, plot. The plot yeah. You can, yeah, just basically pop up all of the Scilab graphics just with. For instance, if you just type in plot, you have a, a sub plot, which is in one window, mm -hmm. two different graphics. Um, two axes, you could say, um, one on top and one in the bottom, uh, which shows you the, the kind of thing that you can do in, uh, in Scilab. Yeah, this is also something that uh, we can mention as a capability of Scilab. You can, within your graphic uh, window, you can also um, make some different, uh, add up some different subplots, subgraphics, and uh, well, basically you get with the hand handle that you have uh, on the graphics, you can do uh, quite a lot of things. Just run your uh, Scilab demonstration in a in a Scilab instance, yeah, and um, well, yeah, it's, it's going to tell you plenty about it. Yeah, so if you just open Scilab itself, you can go to the demonstration. Uh, you've got a few demos on on uh, graphics in Scilab. You've got not only the graphics as as a simple plot, but also uh, some uh, demos on graphical user interface, and this is also. Um, a capability of, of Scilab to uh, add up to your script some graphical user interface with some sliders, um, but here directly within Scilab. Any other question or are, are we good? I think Michael is this. We have time, I guess, so if, if yeah. you want to, um, we have time. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for your feedback, Michael. And so, as I said, uh, our proceedings on that are going to be based on the interest that the community is showing. So it's um, uh, up to you to tell us if uh, if it's worthwhile for us uh, continuing the, the developments on the gateway. Provide you with a nice question. So here, yeah, also, but the webinar it is uh, we 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 recorded it. This uh, session, so we will be uh, posting it on on YouTube or, or on Vimeo or some other video platform. So if you want to review it uh, in the future, if there's something you did not quite understand, just uh, yeah, we'll, we'll post uh, the link on the social networks and we'll send it to you also afterwards as as a follow up. Um, also, yeah, as Paul was mentioning, we will be considering further webinars. So if you have some ideas, some Specific wishes on 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 Scilab, uh, on Xcos maybe. <coughs> we were considering, for example, some uh, modeling, system modeling, and and simulation um, of dynamic system. For example, with with Xcos, because Paul is also an expert in Xcos, so it could be 
uh, a further se se um, session of, of, of webinar? Uh, compare with MATLAB and Simulink, that's uh, if you have the if you have a way to have a, a MATLAB on your computer, uh, which is not the case for me, I don't have 10,000 euros to, to compare it, so I cannot tell you, um, I, have, I didn't make the, 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 the comparison with MATLAB, honestly. Um, yeah, I didn't quite understand the question of James about the comparison with MATLAB and, and, and Simili. Um, well, this is something that we can maybe uh, discuss discuss uh, directly about this uh, this comparison of the features of Scilab with uh, with MATLAB. Um, the question of, of Michael uh, was how I, I, I understood it, uh, how can we connect directly this, uh, this Visa Toolbox to Xcos, um, to Scilab. So basically Xcos, uh, it's, it's working as a, um, let's say an overlay or, or on, it's built on top of Scilab. So if you can um, get your signal thanks to Visa, the Visa toolbox directly within Scilab. You can also write uh, a block, a specific block in Xcos with Scilab code in it, stating, for example, uh, well, get data. Um, and it, it's kind of a, a um, similar function, function uh, in the Visa toolbox to get your data, and it will get you the data from the Scilab environment in Xcos. So basically, I don't know if it's what you meant by visa to Xcos to Scilab, but it's yeah, it is. An I idea. see. I see two ways to to answer that. Uh, two ways to do it in um, in a uh, in, in, in uh, Xcos. It's uh, first you can, um, uh, as um, uh, Jan mentioned, you can write uh, Scilab instructions within Xcos. So you have a, a specific block uh, in Xcos which lets you write any kind of code, uh, Scilab code that you want. Uh, aside from that, if you just want it uh, as an input, like you want um, to import from Scilab an input to Xcos, so use an input of Scilab inside Xcos, there is a block called from workspace, which um, lets you uh, first compute values with, uh, with visas, and if you want to in uh, inject them inside uh, Xcos, you can use the from works workspace block that uh, lets you uh, in, uh, uh, inject values inside Xcos. So I, I hope I answered it uh, in two ways possible. Oh, James, mixed complementary optimization. Um, uh, James, I'm not do quite you, sure what you mean by that. Do you mean um, uh, can you use optimization features uh, inside the um, Scilab script block in LabVIEW? If that's your question, uh, then yes, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, go to the um, yeah, sure, of course. Go to um, uh, Scilab demonstrations. Look, uh, look up the optimization section, and um, all the functions that are present there will be present in your uh, LabVIEW block. Uh, as I said uh, earlier, uh, we have not uh, uh, identified any limitation. There might be ones because we have not tested all the functions. Of course, in uh, uh, in in the uh, you see you see that the, the the four demos that I wrote were pretty basics. So um, I have not tested, for instance, the optimization. So I'm sure they are present because I don't see why they wouldn't be. There there would be no reason for it. But since they are present in um, a standalone version of Scilab, they must be present in the gateway. Yeah. And, and actually, optimization is a field where uh, Scilab is pretty good compared to, to MATLAB. We've got uh, a lot of uh, function in, in linear, non-linear optimization also, as I mentioned earlier with the case of uh, Dassault Aviation, uh, some um, genetic algorithm, um, and also semi, uh, no, uh, simulated annealing. Um, so, yeah, this, this would be actually a good idea to leverage these capabilities of side labbing optimization within <coughs> a lab view script, and this would be definitely a field where both software are a good complement uh, and complementary. So I think we will um, we'll end uh, this webinar for today, and um, well, thank you all of you for, for participating, for 
asking and uh, asking questions and and for your interest. And as I mentioned, now we will send you a few uh, a small a small email just as a follow up, and um, maybe we can uh, speak also um, directly. You know, the two of your feedback on on the webinar and on the subject of test and measurement. It's very nice to have a, a direct interface with uh, our users. So thank you very much for uh, tuning in and uh, uh, for listening, uh, taking the time. So it was a pleasure for us as well. Well, and if you want to uh, see us uh, this afternoon, uh, well, we have a second uh, session of this webinar in English uh, at um, 3, 3 uh, p.m. Uh, French time. So, thank you very much to all of you and, uh, well, see you next time uh, for another webinar on Siren. Bye, guys.